Hello geeks and gamers, Matt Linke here with Through Gamer Goggles and today we have a small sampling of Magic the Gathering's 2014. We have the intro pack that uh, is the Light Force pack and a couple of boosters to take a look at. So the very first thing we notice is that once you get inside to the intro pack you'll note that there's two booster packs of 2014 and the uh, pre-constructed deck along with zoom out just a hair along with the uh, couple of inserts that come with every Magic the Gathering intro pack I mean they're going to be different from set to set obviously uh, but this is a basic how to play scenario and then on the back you have a more in-depth in version of how to play and on the other one you have you are a planeswalker boosting your deck uh, this is pretty much about the intro pack on the back it has all of the different deck lists for all the intro packs so if you're looking for specific types of cards so you can figure it out or if you guys want to get together with some of your friends and just bust it out and play you've got to all agree to buy different decks and then do a little bit of a little sealed type of add a pack type of thing for some flavor that's how you do that uh, for those of you that haven't seen any of 2014 this should be pretty interesting for you zoom back in on the inside the core set inside the core set. Inside the pre-constructed starter we have Johnny's Chosen which is whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control put a 2-2 white cat creature token onto the battlefield if it's a if that enchantment's a, an aura you can attach it to the, the token that comes into play or is put into play so you, 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 put onto the battlefield so it's not a bad creature for a 4 drop that's a 3-3 and then we have Soul Mender, which is kind of a reprint, Tap and Gain a Life, uh, just a new name. Not nearly as good as Soul Warden. Uh, Confession Knight, which is a reprint, Voracious Worm. We have Oromancer, which is a very fitting card for this deck. We have a Banisher Priest, which I'm not familiar with the Banisher Priest. When Banisher Priest enters the bat battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Banisher Priest leaves the battlefield. Not bad for a 3-drop that's a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, that's some white control that is probably well needed at this point in the game. I'm saying well needed because I haven't played Magic in about two years. Uh, I miss the game dearly. And then we have Charging Griffin. The uh, Pillar Field Ox, Downstrike Paladin, which has Vigilance and Lifelink. And he's a 2 4 for 5. That's pretty strong. Uh, of course, the staple, one of the staples of Magic the Gathering since its conception, Sarah Angel. And then you move into a whole bunch of the lands, which is Plains and Forests. Followed up, uh, we move into some artifacts which you have Elixir of Immortality, which is spend two, gain life, or spend two, tap, and gain the five life, shuffle it into your owner's library. Brave the Elements, which is choose a color, white creatures you control, gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. We have Divine Favor, Pacifism, which is a really good card and always has been. Um, and then we have Staff of the Sun Magus, which is a life gain artifact for casting white spells. You have Fortify, which is a defense boost uh, that's an instant, which makes it a little bit stronger. And you have Trollhide, which is a creature boosting enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has regenerate. You have Angelic Chord, which is a enchantment that is triggered at the beginning of each end step. If you gain four or more life this turn, put a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token onto the battlefield that has flying. Rewarded a little bit. That is not so bad for a 4-drop, especially with Congregate following it up and you have little cat creatures that you're putting into play with this deck. 
And then you have indestructibility, which is pretty good if you manage to get it on the a, jo a Johnny's chosen. That was that that background noise is my wife arguing with children. I think sort of playing arguing. And then we have Hunt the Week, which is a card that I have yet to have seen. We have put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. Oh, wow, that's a kind of a throwback to the old tracker from way back in the, the novel book series of cards. And then the first booster that came with the Light Force deck is... Uh, Master of Diversion, a 2-2, two -two, that whenever he attacks, taps target creature defending player controls. Uh, time Ebb, which is a long time reprint. Smelt, which is uh, one red instant destroy target artifact. That's pretty good. Uh, Brindle Boar, which is sacrifice the boar and you gain four life. That would really boost the life force deck in this situation a little bit for... He's being a 3-drop. Then we have Ragathan Firecat, which is a 4-1 for 3. Elvish Mystic, which is the... Uh, I guess he's the replacement for the Land of War Elf. He's a basically a Mana Elf. We have Shrivel. All creatures get minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Uh, only drawback to it is it's a sorcery. We have Coral Marifolk. Beautiful picture. Oh, RK Post. Nice. Uh, striking Sliver. Uh, oh yeah, it's right. Slivers are back in 2014. Sliver creatures you control have first strike, and he's a one drop. That's pretty stinking good. Then you have a Seacoast Drake, flying one three for two. That's pretty impressive, especially with slivers on the table. Another staff of the. Oh no, it's not the Sun Mage. It's just the Wild Mage. So it works for green, which can be a boost to that deck if you're playing sealed with your buddies or some kind of a draft. Uh, Artificer's Hex, which is an enchant equipment at the beginning of your upkeep. If enchanted equipment is attached to a creature, destroy that creature. I like it. One black. I like it. Temporary. Kind of a, another congregate. Wow. Then for the rare, we have a Witch Stalker, which is a 3-drop, three 3-3 drop, three three with Hexproof. And whenever an opponent casts a blue or a black spell... During your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Witch Stalker. That's pretty impressive. And then you get a Red Mountain. And for the bonus card, you get Friday Night Magic. And on the back, it's, it talks about casual format. Pack number two. Starting at the back. Uh, that's a rules tip about drawing and losing if you have no cards in your library to draw. We have a Soul Mender, a Cursed Spirit, which is a 4-drop, 3-2 with Intimidate. We have Cyclops Tyrant, which is another good piece of art. He has Intimidate as well. Uh, he can't block creatures with power 2 or less, though. A bit overpriced. Negate, which is a long-time reprint. Another Regath and Firecat. A Messenger Drake, which is a 3-3 for 5. And when Messenger Drake dies, draw a card. Disperse, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Play on Boomerang. Uh, Canyon Minotaur. Lots of flavor text. A 4-drop, 3-3. Three, three. Griffin Sentinel, 3-drop, 1-3, Flying and Vigilance. Pretty good card. 1-blue, Tomb Scour, target player, puts top 5 cards of his library into his or her graveyard. And we have the Colonian Tusker. Is a 2-drop, three, 3 that's pretty good. Another Congregate. Uh, Battle Sliver, Sliver Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0. Oh. And he's a 3-3 three, three for 5. I'd say it's kind of good. And then the rare is a green sliver, the megantic sliver, which is sliver creatures you control get plus three, plus three. He's a six drop, three, three. Holy cows, he's good. And then your land is a forest. 
And then we're going to move into the four bonus packs that I managed to pick up. Suntail Hawk, classic card. Zephyr Charge, Undead Minotaur, Pitchburn Devils. When Pitchburn Devils die, it deals three damage to target creature or player. Good old Root Walla, he's back. Show of Valor, target creature gets plus two plus four until end of turn. He seems to be. Oh, he's got flying. A flying, pumpable creature. That's not so bad. It's not so great. Uh, then we have Charging Griffin. We have another Disperse. Another Canyon Minotaur. Uh, we have Fire Shrieker, which, a crypt, which is a reprint from uh, Mirrodin Block, I believe. A quick creature has Double Strike. We have a Dark Steel Ingot. I'm glad they brought those back. We have Angelic Accord, which is at the beginning of each upkeep. Oh, yeah, another Angelic Accord. We already had one of those. And then we have uh, Chandra's Phoenix, which is also a reprint. In my opinion, it's an underplayed card. And we have a Sliver Token that looks a lot like a bird. That's really kind of a cool picture. Next pack, we have a Master of Diversion, again, we have another Time Ebb, we have another Smelt, Pay No Heat, Prevent All Damage, a source of your choice would deal this turn. Rambling Bailoth, 4-4 four, four for 4, which is pretty good, strong for a common. Uh, we have a Glade Cover Scout, which is a Hexproof 1-1 one, one for 1. We have a trained condor. Whenever a trained condor attacks, another target creature you control gains flying. A three drop two one with flying that gives flying. That's pretty good. Alters Reap. As an additional cost to cast Alters Reap, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Two cards, a creature for two. Not terrible. Not necessarily my first choice, but I don't know the environment either at the moment. Uh, we have Dragon Hatchling, which is a one red colorless, uh, zero one, and he's pumpable until end of turn, and he flies. That's okay. Pretty good card and limited. Hive Strings put two one one colorless sliver creature tokens onto the battlefield. Well, that's not so bad for three in a heavy sliver environment. Another Tusker. Opportunity, which is a, a reprint. Target player draws four cards. Air Servant, which is an elemental type creature. Uh, a blue and two colorless tap target creature with flying. And then we have the artifact equipment that is Haunted Plate Mail. The equipped creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Haunted Plate Mail becomes a 4-4 Spirit Artifact that's no longer an equipment. Activate this ability only if you control no creatures. That's not so bad. A 4-drop, four 4-4 four, four that can boost other creatures. Pretty functional. Pack 3 of 4. Way of the Land. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Another Capetian Knight. Another Essence Filter. Seismic Stump. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Another Root Walla. Another Messenger Drake. Death Gaze Cockatrice. Four drop, two two, flying, and death touch. Wild Guest. As an additional cost to cast Wild Guest, discard a card, draw two cards. I'm guessing that each color has a draw two cards uh, sorcery or instant in this set. Uh, disperse again. Spore Mound. It's a fungus. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token onto the battlefield. A 3-3-5 three, three, drop. 
I guess with green that might be okay, depending on the current. Oh, look, they brought back Volcanic Geyser. Very nice. Another Staff of the Wild Mages. Another Air Savant. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Another reprint, but it's a very good reprint. I don't know. I mean, he was popular two years ago. I'm guessing he's probably still popular. Garrick, Collar of Beasts. And if not, he's still popular among casual players, so I'm sure he's got some kind of trade value. I'm not the biggest green player, but maybe I will become one again. Lifelink from Child of the Night. It was a 2-drop, two 2-1. Two not so bad. Another Lay of the Land. Lightning Talons, which is Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus 3, plus 0, and has first strike. Brindlebore again. Quag Sickness. Enchant Creature, Enchanted Creature gets minus one, minus one for each swamp you control. Well, that could be a Creature Ender. Uh, divine Favor. Enchant Creature. When Divine Favor enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus three. Which, now that I read it, I'm pretty sure that's a reprint. Another Glade Cover Scout. Another Dragon Hatchling. Ooh, Merfolk Spy. Island Walk. Whenever Merfolk Spy deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals a card at random from his or her hand. I like that guy. Oh, Spellblast is back. Very nice. I haven't played with Spellblast in many years, but I've always liked the card. Another Artificer's Hex, another Congregate, uh, Imposing Sovereign, which is the rare, and it is a white and a colorless to drop it. It's a human. Creatures you, your opponent controls, enter the battlefield tapped. So he's basically a delay card for your opponent, but uh, a 2-1, he's not so bad. He's pretty good, actually. He can, If you can manage to protect him, he's really good. And then we have a foil predatory sliver. So, out of effectively six booster packs, we have decent amount of playable cards. Uh, if this was a draft, it would have probably been a fun one. Because if you look at these cards, some of them are quite quite decent and pretty much kind of say, ha ha, I win the draft or I win the limited. And, well, that is our look into four packs of 2014 along with an introductory pack. I hope this uh, sheds a little bit of light on, you, on it for you if you're looking into Magic the Gathering as to what you might get in the new set. I also hope that, uh, you know, if you were teetering on your decision as to whether by the Light Force deck you can make a decision wisely now. Thanks for watching. This is Matt Linke with Two Gamer Goggles, and this has been a look at Magic the Gathering 2014.